If you'd like to, please subscribe. It helps me out a lot. I post every Wednesday. Hey everyone, my name is Catherine and welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to make a video to answer a question that I've gotten and I kind of got a video inspiration from this comment in a previous video of mine. I got a question from Clarine's Potato, if I'm saying that correctly, and she basically wants to know about all the different countries that I've gone to and me to just talk about them more, along with her being intrigued by this map behind me. So I thought I would make a video today titled, I've been to 60 countries, so let's talk about them and let's rate them based on different categories that I've come up with. With. I will say it's a little bit of a lie technically 60 countries because at the time that I'm filming this I've been to 58 but 60 just sounds so much better than 58 and by the time this goes up it should be around the time that I've hit 60 countries because I'm going to go to two possibly three more countries in the next coming like month and a half and i'm pre-recording videos right now so that you won't be without videos for the month and a half that i'm gone first off before i go into the countries and rating them this map behind me i love i got it at costco years ago they had these maps they had different editions and like colorations of maps but i just got the classic like colored map with the blue ocean and the colored countries and the stars i have i have this little key here but i realized that it's not the best key because especially from afar i have black stars because this is a dry erase board kind of a map which is really cool there's actually two there's a united states map above me but you can't see it and also i love the world map a lot more so i thought it'd be fitting to have it below especially because usually when i'm traveling and talking about travel here it is international travel that i'm mentioning and so i have black stars for places i've been and then i also wrote my home because i'm from washington state and then i have purple stars like the one up here in alaska for places that i want to go to and then i have green for places i'm planning to go to which i've not updated this map very much because now that i think about it I've been to Kenya and it's not starred at all. I have been to Lima, but it's a purple star instead of a black star. I've been to the Galapagos um, and things like that. So I did this a while ago and it's a couple years outdated, but I still really like this map. And I just, I have maps throughout my room and like my office space, which is this. So like I have a map here. I have one of those scratch off maps that's like, on the wall over there that i feel like i need to update as well i even have a map on a different wall that i got on semester at sea because i studied abroad with them and it's a map from japan and then everyone signed it kind of like a yearbook i just think that's such a cute tradition that semester at sea does and yeah i just have maps everywhere i love them it's even on my laptop case i even have like a little earth on my pop socket on my phone but yeah, so now I'm going to go into the countries. I'm not gonna name all the countries that I've been to, but I've made a little list of like different categories and based on the different countries I've been to, to rate them all. Maybe it'd be helpful to know the ones I've been to. So maybe I'll put in the description or something, but given that it's 58, it's like I would be naming it for a while. I just made like different bullet points on my phone. So that's where I'm looking and different categories. Everyone, I feel like the number one question I get asked it is my most favorite country that I've been to so far. I would have to say it would be Japan. And I know so many people want to go to Japan. Japan has such a cool culture from it's more traditional roots to like its cuisine to its modern day it's just such a like futuristic place if you go to tokyo it just feels like it's from the future it's so cool and if you're a fan of any like manga or anime or like big places like nintendo or pokemon there's just a lot of really cool things to see since that's where they originate from and yeah i really loved it tokyo is the most highly populated city in the world there's so much to do there but then kyoto has a really cool like traditional versus modern kind of juxtaposition going on with like the architecture and older buildings along with like skyscrapers osaka is really cool also a major city and that's where like universal studios is 
and yeah i also again just love japanese food as well and that's my overall favorite as for the country that i was most surprised to go to that i didn't expect to go to and i just somehow ended up there i decided to add this as a category because i thought it'd be fun and that is colombia last year i did a couple of different tours with ef ultimate break they do tours for young people between the ages of 18 to 35. i like to do something called back-to-back -back trips if i can i do more than one tour or go to more than one country if i'm in a region of the world if i'm able to time wise and money wise and whatever and i went to peru i really wanted to go to peru for machu picchu and i have a peruvian friend who's introduced me to the culture and the cuisine and made me really want to go and i thought okay what ef trip that i haven't done because at that point i had done costa rica and their ecuador galapagos trip so i was thinking what ef trip goes to like central or south america that would align well with the peru dates that i've chosen and at the time they didn't have their brazil trip um so that it was a bit more limiting than what they have this year and colombia was the best fit and i was like you know what let's go and i was really surprised by colombia i didn't expect to be there but it was an incredible country with incredible food and culture and i had a great tour with like the people on my actual ef ultimate break trip and yeah that's the country that I was most surprised to go to I'm gonna try to somewhat be quick of these so that this video does not end up being like over 30 minutes long and then the country that I felt the most safest I think especially if you're female especially if you're a solo traveler especially if you're a female solo traveler and just in general it's good to know countries where you feel safe or not so safe and for me i solo traveled to iceland twice and i felt very safe there i just love iceland it's also very unique it's a little island in the middle of the ocean and yeah i just i feel like the town of reykjavik itself is very small and walkable and then you can do lots of day trips from there i didn't feel safe enough to like rent a car by myself and drive around the entire country but you can do a lot of different day tours and yeah i really love iceland and i'd so be down to go again even though i've been twice and now best country to solo travel in my mind again iceland because i've done it twice i'm not the biggest fan of just straight up solo traveling i haven't done it that much i've solo traveled a lot on tours where i go by myself to a tour company trip like Kentucky or EF Ultimate Break, but to truly go by myself and do everything on my own, I've only done it a handful of times and one of them was Iceland and I did it twice and I found it to be super just doable and fun and yeah, I enjoyed it. So that would be my vote for best country to solo travel in, especially if you're new to it. And now for the opposite spectrum, the country I felt the least safe in, I would have to say is Egypt. I did Egypt with Kentiki. I did a tour with them. I went with my friend and this was back in 2019. And although generally I was safe, nothing bad happened. I could definitely feel how it wasn't as safe as other places. We weren't allowed to go anywhere outside of with our tour guide. Like we all had to stay together at all times. And our tour guide was like, you know, basically chaperoning us and making sure everything was okay. And you just had to be very vigilant of your surroundings and your belongings and all this, all that. Even my friend was saying that like there was one point where we were, I think we're at Luxor and she got separated from the group because we were like looking at the hieroglyphics and all the different things going on. And she like found herself like some men cornered her and she was able to slip away. So nothing happened. And it was just though a scary moment. And she was with us all within the tour group but just like separating from the tour group by being in like a different room by herself for a few moments that happened so definitely would not recommend solo traveling there um definitely recommend a tour i would feel safe enough to go on a tour to egypt again but definitely not solo travel and now first country that i've been to so technically it's canada outside of obviously the united states because that's where i'm from and was born in and i live in washington state so canada is like the border is like two hours north of me so when i was super little before i even remember i've gone to canada a handful of times with my parents but besides canada the first time i was out of the country i actually surprisingly did not internationally travel outside of canada until later on in my life like i haven't been traveling my entire life it's been mostly my adulthood 
besides a few trips here and there. And when I was nine years old, I went on a trip to Russia and Belarus to visit family because at that point, a lot of my family, other than my grandma on my dad's side, had never met me before because my parents were like the odd ones out that moved and immigrated to the US. So it was a family trip for me to meet everyone. It was overwhelming, I remember, but also exciting. And I was nine years old, so that was my first international trip. Now the next category I gave is best biodiversity. I love animals, I love nature, I just love like, like I'm really passionate about climate change and I'm just, yeah, very into all that kind of stuff. So I thought I'd put this as a category and I put the Galapagos down, which is owned in a part of Ecuador. So technically Ecuador, but I wanted to specify the Galapagos because they are so different, just like Hawaii is so different from mainland US. But the Galapagos were so cool. I highly recommend for you to go. The different types of animals that they had, the different types of plants, and even the sand, the beaches, it was the most white, soft, sand ever and i remember like my family loves miami we go to miami a lot and i thought the sand in miami was so nice and soft and it is but comparing that to the galapagos now i'm just like it's not the same galapagos is a whole other level and it's also a lot more like yes there's tourists there but there's not a crazy amount so it also just felt like you got to have more just calm and serene moments as well and we'd have like beaches to ourselves a lot of the time there was this one beach where there were seals everywhere and they were so used to people they like they sleep everywhere on picnic benches in not the middle of the street but like on the sidewalks of course on beaches like you just find them everywhere they're like almost like crows there which is just so funny and uh, some of them they're just so used to people and they get close to you so it was just such a fun experience i would have loved to have another day in the galapagos take a book and go read on a beach and be surrounded by seals and sometimes get interactions you're of course not supposed to touch them which usually they like get just close enough where you feel like they're going to touch you and you don't want to get in trouble but they don't so <laughs> there's that and then there's also the blue footed boobies which are such a funny term for a bird which it is these birds that have these like neon blue legs and like feet it is crazy there is iguanas there that also like swim like crazy good and they have amazing marine life snorkeling there's incredible i went snorkeling with sea turtles and there was one time because we went snorkeling more than once where I was snorkeling and there's like a seal by the steps and then he was like swimming with us at one point and there were sea turtles and it was like what is this life it was so cool so the Galapagos were like high up on my list and I definitely recommend it next we have the furthest flight that I've done and the furthest I've traveled internationally and that would be to Australia so I actually moved to Australia temporarily for like a semester abroad but technically it was post graduation for undergrad I did a semester length of a time long international internship I thought it'd be a really cool experience to get working abroad and so I found it in Australia and I thought because I'd be working and living to go to a place that they speak English so that it's a bit more easy for me so I don't have to like learn I don't know Mandarin or something but I flew from Seattle to LAX which is that's a short flight it's like three hours and then from LAX I flew to Melbourne which off the top of my head, I'd have to look, but it was definitely like somewhere in the teens of like the hours, like 15, 14, 13 hours. And that was uh, like the second half of a flight. So that was wild, especially because I almost missed that flight because my Seattle to LA flight kept getting delayed. There was me and one other guy that were, we didn't know each other, but we were the only ones on that flight that were scheduled to go to the Australia bound flight afterwards. And they both, bumped us to the first row of first class and they said when you land to LAX if you book it and you sprint you might make your flight and of course I'm not that familiar with LAX it is a major airport I'm sure it's confusing to the general public but especially for me who doesn't know it very well and apparently they'd moved like their they have their general spaces where they have the Australia flights go off of and they had moved it and so I remember running down these long corridors with like no windows and it was horrible to then sit on a flight for like 13 whatever hours so that was horrible for the longest time that I've spent in a country would be again Australia I spent 
probably like four or five months there. I did do traveling within Australia, but I never left the country. I did stop by New Zealand before heading back home, but that was after my internship ended. And once I left Australia and was bound for the US, I just had like a stopover for a couple of days, but that was the longest time. And that was because I wasn't just traveling, but also getting work experience. I also put down least favorite country, and then I wrote have to think about it. And I forgot to think about it. So now I'm on the spot with least favorite. And I hate to say least favorite because a lot of times it's just like maybe the situation I was in or I don't know enough about the country. I didn't spend enough time in the country. So I don't want to like say anything bad about countries, but obviously I have my favorites versus not so favorites. And I would say maybe just to make it simple, my least favorite might have been Myanmar, also known as Burma. It is in Southeast Asia. It's actually the poorest country in Southeast Asia. And I might, honestly, if I didn't get, I'll talk about it after this question. If I didn't get violently sick, <laughs> I probably, it would be higher up on my list. And also, if you go to Myanmar, it is really well known for pagodas and also hot air balloon rides. You just have to take a flight north. And I decided to just stay in Vietnam, if I'm saying that right, near like where my, I was doing semester at sea at the time. So it, my ship had docked. It's like you're literally Sweet Life of Zack and Cody style on a ship living and studying on the ship. And then you're like going to different countries around the world. When I found that out, I knew I had to go. I feel like if I traveled up north to where it's more known for things and also then not get sick, it would definitely be higher up. But I think it's just like the circumstances and maybe I just made the mistake of not doing that is why it's lower on the list. The least visited country that I've been to, I would have to say probably Myanmar. Myanmar, I looked, I was actually surprised in the past year in 2023, they had a little over a million visitors come in, which I was expecting it to be less. But I guess for the whole year for an entire country, maybe that's low but that's the least visited country and i guess i thought i was going to go into more specifics of me getting sick in myanmar in the next question but i didn't so basically long story short when you're in certain places you should avoid certain things like street food maybe dairy or certain meats or like vegetables that aren't cooked or like if you can't peel it then don't cook it or don't eat it raw or something like that. There's a rhyme I'm forgetting, but I made this stupid mistake of towards like the later part of my trip in Myanmar. I was like, I'm doing well. I feel more comfortable in this country. And I decided to go to like a cafe to enjoy some Wi-Fi with friends because at the time, I think semester at sea has gotten better, but we had like no Wi-Fi on the ship other than like Wikipedia and like some news sites. And so we just wanted to have some Wi-Fi, check in on family and friends back home, maybe post on social media. And at this cafe, I decided to order a milkshake. <laughs> and this cafe was very pretty. It was like Instagram, a bowl or whatever. And I took the mistake of looking at an interior design of a place and thinking that because it looks very clean and modern means that I can have things there that I shouldn't in other places. So like the general rule of avoiding dairy because I feel like dairy isn't as common in Asian countries. So I got a milkshake and yeah, once <laughs> I had the milkshake and was fine. And then before we left the cafe, I decided to go into the back to go to the bathroom. And as soon as I saw the back and the bathroom, I knew I'd made a grave mistake. And I feel like once we left within like 10 minutes, I started to feel sick and I was sick for days after. I did not know that you could throw up that much and that you had that much liquid in you <laughs> to throw up. Sorry, TMI. But like, I did not, like, like I skipped my tour the next day. I was like, there's no way I can go. Other people got sick as well. It was a whole thing. So there's that. Going to the next question I have, it is the most visited country that I've been to. I had to look this up and apparently it is France. France is the most visited country in the world with 72.4 million annual travelers, at least in 2023. And I actually have not seen a ton of France, but I've been to France, I've been to Paris and it's all right. I mean, I would go again and see more, but it's not my favorite country in Europe, but I don't have anything 
strongly against it. For my last question, I have countries that I've been to that you cannot currently visit. So it's kind of fun sometimes, but sad also in other ways that like you can go at one point in time to a country and then another point in time, you can't go there anymore, whether it's like political climates or what have you. And as of now, it is Belarus, Russia, Israel, Myanmar, and China that I've been to that you can't currently go to or that according to the US government website, highly advised not to visit level. So Belarus and Russia, because of the war in Ukraine, my family lives in Belarus and I'm Belarusian and Russia. So that's hard because that's another layer of like my family's there and I want to see them. But that's on the list. Israel, because of the war going on. I went to Israel after Egypt in 2019. Myanmar, because Myanmar is constantly having like such big human rights issues. And there is even debates about like, should Semester Hertzi bring students to Myanmar? Because it's promoting, like it's giving money to the country that's giving, like that's just horrible with like human rights. But then also they do benefit a lot with the money that we give by traveling there. So it's like a whole debate. But right now, I guess it's gotten worse. It got a bit better right when I was traveling there and then it's gotten worse again. So there's that. And then China, I feel like it might be related to just COVID still, but COVID happened like started a while ago. Obviously it's still ongoing, but China's on the level four do not travel list. That is my ratings. I just kind of wrote that all out when I got inspired. And I tried to go fast so that this video isn't super long. And yeah, so let me know about countries that you've been to or want to go to or how many you've been to. Obviously, it's about the places you go to and experiences and not like the numbers you're hitting. But it's still very exciting that I'm hitting the goal of 60 countries by might be 61, actually, because I might do a day trip. I'm going to Chile and Argentina soon, and I might do a day trip to Uruguay from Argentina. So by the time I hit 30, I'm going to hit 60 or 61 countries, which is very satisfying. So thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you in a future video of mine.